so far we've looked at two, uh, excuse me, three truth tables, one for the negation, one for conjunction, and one for disjunction. And in this lesson we're going to look at the last two for the conditional and the biconditional. And we're going to start with the conditional. In example one it says, uh, to assume that the following statement is true except when I break my promise. Um, that's the easiest way to determine the truth value of a conditional statement. So the statement is, if you get an A in the class, then I will buy you a car. So the simple statements are P, you get an A, Q, I buy you a car. So let's look at the first case. So if you have true, true, both of them are true, case one, it says, you basically it means you get an A and I buy you a car. So the question is, did you, uh, did I break my promise? And you got an A and I bought you a car, so I did not break my promise, so the following statement is true. All right, in case two, the true-false case, meaning you got an A is true, and I buy you a car is false. So that means you got an A and I didn't buy you a car. And so the question is, did I break my promise? And I did. So the conditional is false when the promise is broken. Next case, false true. So when P is false, it means you didn't get an A. When Q is true, I bought you a car. And again, the question is, did I break my promise? Now the promise was, if you get an A, then I'll buy you a car. That doesn't mean that if you don't get an A, I can't buy you a car. So by buying you a car here, even though you didn't get an A, I didn't break my promise. So the conditional is true. The last case, when they're both false, meaning you didn't get an A and I didn't buy you a car, um, the question is, did I break my promise? I know, because the promise was, if you get an A, I'll buy you a car. You didn't get an A and I did not buy you a car, so this is also true. So this is a specific example that's supposed to help you understand the conditional, and using that idea of breaking a promise is very helpful when you see a conditional uh, truth table. And so just for the generic truth table, for the conditional, the only time a conditional statement is false is under the true-false. It is true under all other circumstances. So only when this is the, the scenario where I basically broke my promise. All right, let's, let's use an example here. We've got an advertisement for Perky Mountain Coffee. It makes the following claim. If you drink Perky Mountain Coffee, then you will not be sluggish and you will have a great day. Let's translate the following into symbolic uh, form and construct a truth table. So what I'd like you to do is pause the video and write your three simple statements, the P, Q, and R, and also make sure that you write everything in the affirmative, right? Remember, we'll take the negation later. Then start the video up and check your, uh, check your statements and compare them with mine, and then we'll go ahead and set up the truth table. Okay, so the three simple statements are P, you drink Perky Mountain Coffee. Q, you will be sluggish. Remember, I didn't take the not into consideration um, because we'll take that into consideration when we use the negation and R will be, you will have a great day. So now that we've got our simple statements, we want to translate those into symbolic form, or translate this, this sentence into symbolic form, and then we'll set up a truth table. So I'd like you to pause the video again and set up your, um, your symbolic uh, representation of this sentence, and then turn the video back on again to see if you're correct. Uh, I highly recommend using pencil. Okay, so the conditional statement is if P, then, and then in parentheses, not Q and R. Notice because of the comma, we separate the first simple statement from the next compound statement with a set of parentheses. All right, <clears throat> so the next thing I'm going to do is we're going to fill in all of the, P, the truth values for P, for not Q, and for R. 
and then we'll um, we'll continue to work on this uh, truth table. So I'd like you to pause the video again and fill in just the column under P, under uh, not Q, and under R. Okay, now that we've got the truth values for the P, the not Q, and the R's, let's let's do the rest of this together. All right. The last thing I'm going to do in this particular problem is the conditional. Because of the parentheses, I'm going to do the um, conjunction next, and then we'll do the conditional last. So we'll now fill in our truth values for uh, the AND statement. And we know that an AND statement is only true if both of them are true. So this first one is going to be false. This is going to be false. This is true. False. 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 True. And false. And so the last thing we're going to do now, so if you want to circle this as your um, kind of your next to last column, or if you want to do a little arrow saying, I'm going to take the P column with the conjunction column, and that's going to be my final answer, my answer column. So the conditional is only false when you have a true false. It is true under all other circumstances, or all under condi other conditions. So the first, I've got a true and a false, so this is going to be false. The second here, I've got another true false, so that's going to be false. True true is true. True false is false. False false is true. False false is true. False true is true. And false false is true. And so this column right here, the red column, is your answer column. And my recommendation to you, because you won't be using, most likely not using colored pencils or pens, is to just circle your answer column um, to indicate that that is the final answer of the problem. Okay, we'll continue this in the next video.